Soaring through the skies and gliding between clouds, it's undeniable how versatile aircrafts are on the battlefield. From careful reconnaissance planes to powerful fighters and destructive bombers, air superiority is vital to securing any victory. However, with over 100 years of designs and countless companies striving to create the next cutting edge systems, subpar designs are often made and produced. From the plane that couldn't shoot its guns, to the expensive interceptor, and the faulty wing jet, here are some of the worst aircraft ever made. F-35 Lightning II the F-35 Lightning II is a Generation 5 fighter aircraft made by Lockheed Martin. It is used by various nations such as the US, Australia, UK and Israel. With its first flight being in 2006, it is one of the newest fighters currently used by the US. The F-35 has the ability to provide electronic warfare, surveillance, intelligence and reconnaissance support and can function as a multi-role fighter. However, even with all these achievements, the F-35 has major flaws. An investigation by Defence News into the flaws of the F-35 revealed that there were 857 deficiencies, with 7 of them being critical. Flaws include premature cracking of airframes, vulnerable fuel tanks, improperly sealed cockpits, helmet display problems, vulnerability to cyber attacks, heavy weight, manoeuvrability issues, and the small electronic scan area. Couple this with the cost of 75 million US dollars per jet, and the F-35 is bulky and too costly for how little it delivers. Yakovlev Yak-38 First taking off in 1971, the Yakovlev Yak-38 was a Soviet naval strike fighter produced by Yakovlev. It was used exclusively on Soviet naval craft from 1976 until the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. The Yak-38 was infamous thanks to its underwhelming features. Due to the unique engine configuration, the aircraft was notoriously difficult to handle. Mechanical failures and operator errors were of an increased risk due to its early design. When taking off, the Yak kicked dust and debris everywhere, leading to possible damage. On top of this, the aircraft's automatic ejection system often accidentally triggered. But by far the worst feature was its VTOL capabilities. VTOL, or Vertical Takeoff and Landing, are aircraft which can take off without the use of a runway. Unfortunately, the Yak-38's VTOL system was often finicky and unreliable. However, these issues were resolved as new variations came out. The Yak-38 was a great showcase for the limitations and failures of early VTOL aircraft, and was an embarrassment to the Soviet designers. MiG-9 Following the Second World War, a new kind of conflict was brewing. The clashing ideologies of capitalism and communism fueled an arms race, which called for new technologies to be forged under the pretenses of nuclear conflict. First taking flight in 1946, the MiG-9 was the first turbojet fighter made by Mikko Jan Huvich. Using reverse-engineered German BMW 003 engines, the MiG-9 was a first-generation jet fighter and was cutting edge for the Soviet Union. However, due to jets being relatively new, the MiG was far from perfect. Most notably, the jet was unable to fire its guns at high altitudes due to the gun gas being sucked into the engine, starving it. Even at low altitude, the jet was unable to fire all its guns at once, with only cannons or machine guns being able to operate at one time. During only the 12th flight, the first MiG-9 prototype crashed due to its airframe warping and failing while pulling tight turns. Only 610 MiG-9s were made, before being retired in 1948 for the MiG-15, which was a much better design. Afro-Canada CF-105 Arrow With the shadow of nuclear conflict quickly descending upon the world, many nations were quick to adopt new technologies. With an initial flight in 1958, the Afro-Canada CF-105 Arrow was a highly capable delta-wing interceptor plane that served in the Canadian Air Force. Designed and manufactured by Avro Canada, the Arrow had a max speed of Mach 2 and a max altitude of 53,000 feet, making it an impressive jet for the time. Able to travel up to 300 miles, the Arrow was a capable jet for long-range nuclear strike and interceptor missions. 
However, even with these strides in technology, the Arrow is too far ahead of its time. The cost of the jet and its missiles was too high for the public to support. Although the cost of the aircraft is unknown, the missiles alone would cost 164 million Canadian dollars to deploy, with the SAGE system costing another 107 million Canadian. This was projected to increase the Canadian defence spending from 25 to 30 percent. With political pressure and criticism quickly descending upon the aircraft, the project was cancelled in 1959. Only five aircraft were made, with another 32 being in production, and the aircraft never took off again. Heinkel HE-162 With the Third Reich quickly falling, Germany quickly scrounged what little resources it had to create the Heinkel HE-162. Taking off in late 1944, the HE-162 was hastily put together using mostly wood, as metal was in short supply. With a wingspan of only 7.2 meters, the aircraft is quite small, with room for only one pilot. The jet had a top-mounted engine behind the cockpit, which allowed the engine to be easier accessed for maintenance. Unfortunately, the engine's placement made it difficult to bail out the aircraft without hitting the engine. Another drawback was its limited fuel capacity due to its small size. Crammed in were two auto cannons, which were pitiful compared to the aircraft for the time. Due to its engine placement, subpar build quality, fuel restrictions, pilot inexperience, and horribly underpowered guns, the 162 was found to be very dangerous and unreliable to fly. Only 320 were made in total, and the aircraft was retired in May of 1945. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and subscribe for more.